Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Recipes and Reads. Today we are here to talk about my book of the month track record. So this coming June actually marks my five year anniversary of being with Book of the Month. My very first order was placed in June of 2018. And so I thought it would be fun to kind of go through all of the boxes I've had shipped to me since June of 2018 to see how I've done. Have I read the books? Did I read them and unhaul them? Did I DNF them? Did I unhaul them without reading them? What is the status of these books today to see kind of how I've done in terms of all of the books that I've purchased? Now this is not supposed to be an evaluation of Book of the Month in general. I'm not here to do a is Book of the month worth it video because I personally believe that book of the month is absolutely worth it otherwise I would not have subscribed for five years. So this is not supposed to be an analysis of whether or not I should continue with book of the month based on my track record with their books if that makes sense. I am purely here for fun to see how I've done with all of the books that I have purchased from book of the month in the past. So there is going to be a lot of these books to go through. I'm just going to kind of bring them up when I purchase them and what their status currently is. All right like I said my very first order was in June 2018 and it included the following. The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, which I absolutely adored. I think I gave this five stars back when I read it. I'd say it's still pretty much one of my favorite romances of all time. I can't say the same about her other two books, which were much weaker than this in my opinion, but as you can see, I still have the Book of the Month edition on my shelves, so I did very much love it. Also in that order was Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. So I actually had read this book prior to purchasing this edition. So I didn't actually read this edition, but I didn't actually own a copy of the book. So when I saw that it was there on Book of the Month as an add-on selection, I went ahead and jumped on it. So I do still have the book of the month edition on my shelf. The final book in that very first order was Final Girls by Riley Sager. This was Riley Sager's very first book under this name and it was the very first Riley Sager that I've ever read. And to be quite honest, it's a miracle I decided to continue with Riley Sager after the trash fire that was this book. I really hated this book. I gave it a two stars. I think this is one of his worst yet, which is funny because it is definitely one of his most popular and one of his most well-known. And this is the book that kind of gets people wanting to read Riley Sager, but that was not the case for me. I did not enjoy it. By the time I read this, I already had some several other Riley Sagers in the book of the month editions on my shelves and so since I knew I was going to continue with him as an author I decided to go ahead and keep this edition but needless to say definitely not my favorite Sager. All right moving on into July 2018 I have three books here. The first is The Girl from Blind River by Gail Massey. So I actually did read this book but I have since unhauled it. Overall it was a fairly okay reading experience. I don't really have much against the book but I also didn't love it either and I didn't really feel the need to keep it on my shelves so I went ahead and unhauled it. Also in that box I had The Last Equation of Isaac Severy by Nova Jacobs. I read this one as well and I honestly didn't really like it at all so I went ahead and unhauled it and this third and final one I actually didn't read. I went ahead and just unhauled it and that was Ghosted by Rosie Walsh. I think this was a situation where it had just sat on my shelves for too long and by that point I had lost all interest in reading it. It wasn't really something that was aligning with my reading tastes at the time and so I went ahead and sold it. Okay it looks like I skipped August of 2018 so we're moving on into September. The first one that I had in that box was Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pimbro. So this was another one that I ended up unhauling before I read it. The only book that I've ever read by Sarah Pimbro is Behind Her Eyes. I actually really thought that the twist lived up to all of the hype around it. I had guessed part of what was going to come but not the full extent of what was going to come. However, I have heard almost nothing but bad things about her subsequent novels and especially this one. This one was getting really low reviews and people that I trust that had read the book didn't really like it either and so I was like you know what I don't even think I'm gonna bother so I went ahead and unhauled that one. Also in that box was Other People's Houses by Abby Waxman and me and Abby Waxman don't get along. This was the first book that I read by her. It was extremely underwhelming. It was basically a family drama if I remember correctly like set in a neighborhood. So it was like neighborhood drama and I didn't like it hardly at all. I think it gave it like a two or three stars. Whatever it was it was extremely mediocre and unmemorable and I definitely unhauled that one. And then the last book from September 2018, The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Obviously still have it still on my shelves. This is actually one of my very favorite Riley Sagers so I will keep this one forever because it has one of my favorite twists in a book. It was definitely one that I did not see coming at all and I really appreciate that he was able to shock me in that way. So very glad to have this one on my shelves. Moving on into October 2018, I have The Clockmaker's Daughter by Kate Morton. This is a historical fiction. It was my very first experience with Kate Morton and my first and only actually experience with Kate Morton. And I liked it enough and I kept it on my shelves for a while, but ultimately decided that I didn't love it enough to keep it there. I have since unhauled it. And then the second book in that was An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by John Green. I tried to read it, I DNF'd it, and I unhauled it. Moving on into November 2018, we have Nine Perfect Strangers 
Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. This is one that I really lost interest in. I started it, I got a couple of chapters in and just decided that it wasn't what I was looking for. I really don't like the audiobook narrator that narrates some of her books. And since I knew that I was never gonna sit down and physically read this one, I just decided to go ahead and unhaul it and get rid of it. Next we have For Better and Worse by Margot Hunt. This was kind of a domestic suspense thriller that overall I had a pretty decent reading experience with, but it wasn't one that I really felt the need to keep on my shelves. So I went ahead and unhauled it. And the final book in that box was The Proposal by Jasmine Guillory. I did read that book and I hated it with a fiery passion. Naturally, it was a quick unhaul for me and I will never read anything from Jasmine Guillory again. Hated it so much. Right, moving into December of 2018, One Day in December by Josie Silver. I actually really, really enjoyed this story a lot. It was a contemporary romance set during the Christmas season. I had a really positive time with this and I'm glad that I still have this one on my shelves. Also in that box was one of my favorite thrillers of all time, No Exit by Taylor Adams. I've actually talked about this recently. Y'all know my love of the story runs deep. It is one of my favorite wintry isolation thrillers out there. One of the top ones that I recommend to people looking for that type of story. I will never get rid of this one. And the third and final book that was in that box was Winter in Paradise by Ellen Hildebrand. At the time, I wasn't really sure how I felt about Ellen Hildebrand as an author. I can't remember if I'd already read a book by her at that time. And ultimately, I ended up reading two of her stories. None of them were really mind-blowing. And so I decided to just go ahead and unhaul this one without reading it. Moving on into 2019, the only book that was in my January box, The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. I remember reading this and having a pretty decent reading experience with this. So I did go ahead and keep this one on my shelves. All right, I skipped February. So moving on into March of 2019, we actually have some big guns in that box, starting with Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Y'all know how I feel about Taylor Jenkins Reid. She's one of my favorite authors of all time. I love this. Of course, I will never get rid of a TJR book. Another one that I absolutely love, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Again, Kristen Hanna is one of my favorite authors of all time and this is definitely one of my favorite World War II historical fictions of all time. This was just such a flippin' masterpiece. This one will absolutely break your heart but if you love World War II historical fiction and you've never read this one you absolutely need to. All right so this next one is probably going to be a pretty controversial opinion but the third and final book that was in my March 2019 box was The Secret History by Donna Tartt. It is one that I started DNA and unhauled. Now hear me out. I completely accept the fact that this could have been an it's me not you situation or more likely it could have been because I was listening to it on audio. Donna Tartt herself was narrating this story and I thought she was not a great audiobook narrator. Some of the character voices she was using were just so high and nasally. I don't think she was doing a great job of reading the story but this is not something that I'm ever going to sit down and read physically. So that is one that I made the conscious decision to go ahead and unhaul and I probably won't come back to it at any point. All right moving on into April 2019 the first book that we have is Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. This is a legal thriller and it was solidly done. I remember really enjoying my reading experience of this. Overall, I found the story very well woven and kind of complicated. There were definitely some great legal scenes in here as well. So I decided to keep this one on my shelves. Another one I decided to keep was Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Hunneman. This is a literary fiction that follows our titular character Eleanor Oliphant. And overall, this again was one that I had a solid reading experience with. So kept it on my shelves. And the third book that was in that box was The Gilded Wolves by Roshini Chokshi. And I decided to go ahead and unhaul it and not read it. So that is not one that I read. All right, May 2019 the first book that I have, The Bride Test by Helen Huang. As I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the Kiss Quotient, I didn't love the other two books in this companion series. This is definitely my least favorite of the three. I thought this was such a weak storyline. I don't know, it was just the plot that really did it for me. It wasn't viable whatsoever. There was a lot that was irritating about this to me, but I went ahead and kept this just because I already had the Kiss Quotient, so I thought I might as well just keep them, but this was not a hit for me. Also in the box was Enchante by Gita Trelis, and that was okay. You know, it wasn't really my type of thing. It was set in historical France and it just it wasn't doing much for me so I did read it I did complete it but I ultimately ended up unhauling that one and another one that I unhauled without reading was How Not to Die Alone by Richard Roper. Moving on into June 2019 we have Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keen. This was another one that I unhauled without reading. I probably should give the caveat here that when I first started with Book of the Month I was just kind of grabbing anything that sounded interesting and in recent years I've tried to be a lot more mindful about what I pick up from Book of the Month and try to be a lot more selective but within the first couple of years of Book of the Month I was just kind of grabbing everything that sounded of interest and then my reading tastes have drastically changed since June of 2018. And some of these books sat on my shelves for quite a while. So just because I'm talking about getting these in like June 2018 or 2019, some of these books I didn't even unhaul until like within the last couple of years. And so they were sitting on my shelves for a while. They had plenty of time for me to read them but I ultimately ended up losing interest in them. So that's why I'm going through these like older books and I've unhauled without reading quite a strong percentage of them unfortunately. One that I did read and enjoy and kept, An Anonymous Girl by by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Buchanan. I really like this duo of suspense thriller authors. They typically are featured on Book of the Month
month quite regularly when they have a new release. I will probably pick up everything that they write because I have a fairly solid reading experience with all of their stories and this one was no exception. And then the final book that was in June 2019's box was Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. This was a nonfiction story and I'm just not a nonfiction girly unless it's true crime. Nonfiction just doesn't do it for me. So a lot of the nonfiction that I ended up picking up from Book of the Month in the early years I ended up unhauling without reading just because it's not really my thing no matter how interesting the storyline sounds to me. So that one went. All right moving on into July 2019 we have Things You Save in a Fire by Kathleen Center. This is one that I read and it was okay. It was nothing mind-blowing and so I did go ahead and unhaul it just because it wasn't anything that I felt the need to keep on my shelves. That box also contained Recursion by Blake Crouch which I did read and of course I kept. That month also featured the next Riley Sager which was Lock Every Door. Of course read it, kept it. This is not my favorite Riley Sager. It's probably one of my least but again I'm gonna read everything that he writes. I'm gonna probably keep everything that I read by him even if I don't enjoy it just to have a full collection of his on my shelf. So of course I snagged this one up in July. All right moving on into August of 2019 we have The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This was actually the very first Ruth Ware that I purchased from Book of the Month. Y'all know that I really like Ruth Ware. I enjoy her writing and they typically have her releases on Book of the Month so I will snag them every time they come out. Also as part of that box we had Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. That of course was another nonfiction which I I did read. I didn't love it. I gave it a three stars but it was just okay for me and I did go ahead and unhaul that one. Another one that I read and unhauled that was in that August 19 box was Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This was a cute contemporary renaissance -y type romance which was sweet. I had an overall good time reading it but it was nothing mind-blowing to me so I went ahead and unhauled it and I probably will not be continuing in that series. All right September 2019 I had The Chestnut Man by Soren's Five Strep. This was a suspense thriller that I read. Overall enjoyed it was okay but ultimately unhauled. The same with The Whisper Man by Alex North. And the third book that was in this box was American Predator, The Hunt for the Most Meticulous Serial Killer of the 21st Century by Maureen Callahan. This is a true crime that covered the crimes of Israel Keyes, who was a serial killer operating in the United States for many, many years. And I just realized I hadn't been holding up the book this whole time. This is the book. It was okay. It wasn't the best thing that I've ever read. This was very, very bare bones. And this just really didn't do it justice, in my opinion. All right, I skipped October. So moving into November of 2019, we have Get a Life of Chloe Brown by Talia Hibber. This is a contemporary romance novel. I tried starting it. I got through like a chapter, wasn't really feeling it, and so decided to stop reading it and since unhauled it. Another nonfiction that I ended up getting from Book of the Month and then unhauled before I read was The Great Pretender by Susanna Cahalan. This again is just one that I had. It sat on my shelves for a while and I realized I'm really not like a nonfiction girly so I ultimately unhauled it. Final book that I got in that box was The Winter Sister by Megan Collins. This is one that I've obviously kept but to be honest with you I don't remember like anything about this one at all. I I remember having a decent reading experience with this otherwise I wouldn't have kept it but it's not ringing any bells like I couldn't tell you anything about the plot so this might be one that I consider unhauling in the future. All right moving into December of 2019 The Long Bright River by Liz Moore. This is a gritty type of crime novel and I really really enjoy this one. I think if I remember correctly I flew through this one in like 24 hours because I could not stop reading it and so I was absolutely going to be keeping this one. Another one in that box was I Have No Secrets by Penny Jolson. Now this is one that I didn't read and I unhauled and if I remember correctly this was a YA option and it was just one that I, I lost interest in. It wasn't really one that I had any interest in reading so I unhauled it. The other one I had in this box that I unhauled without reading was Dear Edward by Anne Napolitano. Now I actually recently just purchased Anne Napolitano's newest release called Hello Beautiful and I'm really interested in the concept of that story and I was really interested in the concept of Dear Edward. The reason why I unhauled it was because this is following a young boy who is like the sole survivor of a plane crash and if I understand correctly that book is entirely told from his perspective. I can't remember off the top of my head how old he is. I just don't do well with books that are told from young children's perspectives and especially when I was going to be listening to it via audio and I wasn't sure how that was going to work out. So I made the decision to go ahead and unhaul it but what I understand it's a very beautiful story. It definitely touches upon grief a lot. This boy probably deals in some form with survivor's guilt and I've heard like I said really great things about it but I just don't know if it's for me. You'll have to let me know if you have read this story and what your thoughts and feelings are because I could possibly be persuaded to read it at some point in the future. All right finally moving into January of 2020 and in that box I got The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. Y'all know that I rave about this book constantly. This is another one that I flew through in 24 hours. It is one of my favorite suspense thrillers of all time. It was just so bingeable and compulsively readable and highly recommend. Also in this box was The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. This was kind of a nonfiction surrounding H.H. H. Holmes who was America's first serial killer. I started to read it. It wasn't really doing much for me and so I ultimately ended up stopping and unhauling. Also in that box was Truth Be Told by Kathleen Barber. This is another one that I read and unhauled and I remember absolutely nothing about and that's probably why I unhauled it just because I don't remember absolutely anything about it. It was 
probably a suspense thriller of some kind, but I couldn't tell you the first thing about that book. So it's gone. Moving into February of 2020, we have the next Greer Hendricks and Sarah Buchanan book. You are not alone. Of course, like I said, I'm probably going to pick any one of their books up if they are featured on Book of the Month. And I really enjoyed my reading experience with this one. Also that month, The Holdout by Graham Moore. This was another legal thriller that I really, really enjoyed. Hence why I kept it. I wouldn't mind reading more from Graham Moore in the future. This is another story that is fast paced and plot driven, not so character driven, which doesn't always work for me, but this worked out pretty well. All right, moving on into March, 2020, we have another by Eric Larson, The Splendid and the Vile. This is one that I unhauled basically at the same time I unhauled The Devil in the White City. Same author, same kind of deal. I knew that it wasn't one that I was really going to read or enjoy. I didn't even start that one. I just unhauled it. One that I did read was Hour of the Assassin by Matthew Quirk. So this is an example of a really super fast paced plot driven one that just didn't really work for me because there was almost no character focus whatsoever. And this is another one that I can't really remember anything about because this is one that would be more reminiscent of an action movie. Like I would watch this adapted on screen. Didn't really love what it did for me on the page. Also in this box was The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver. This is actually one that I unhauled without reading, which is kind of surprising given my love of One Day in December. This is another one that I could possibly be convinced to go back and read. I really unhauled this one because the premise wasn't really grabbing me, but also I'm not the biggest on fluffy contemporary. I really like a lot of oomph and harder hitting elements, and it didn't seem like this one was going to give that to me, but I could be entirely wrong. So I ultimately just went ahead and unhauled that one. April 2020 was a hit because I actually read and kept all three of the books in that box, starting with The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This is definitely not the most amazing suspense thriller, but it was an entertaining time, so I went ahead and kept it. A book that I got in that box that I love so very much, All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Gryn Greenwood. This is a literary fiction that deals with some very, very tough and disturbing topics, but it was so beautifully done. And then Beach Read by Emily Henry. So this is actually not my favorite Emily Henry. It's probably my least favorite at this point, but I did want to go ahead and get it in the Book of the Month editions. They have since stopped selling her books in Book of the Month editions, which makes me sad, but I'm glad that I do have a couple of hers in these editions. All right, I skipped both May and June, so moving on into July of 2020, we have The Shadows by Alex North. I actually ended up picking this book before I had read The Whispers by Alex North. So I had both of them on my shelves at the same time. I read The Whispers. It wasn't amazing. It didn't blow me away, but I had kept it. And then I started The Shadows and I realized this just wasn't what I wanted. It's not what I was looking for. I was kind of bored. So I ultimately ended up DNFing it and unhauling both of his books. One that I also unhauled without reading was The Last Flight by Julie Clark. So I have since heard some pretty decent things about this, but the reason that I ultimately unhauled it was because I didn't think I was going to get the oomph that I wanted. It was a very, very short suspense thriller. And I thought that it was going to be so action packed that it was going to be good for the moment, but it wasn't going to be something that I remembered going forward. And I didn't really want to waste my time on it. But the one hit that came out of the July 2020 box, One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This is such a phenomenal contemporary story. I highly recommend. It came and knocked me off my feet and I wasn't expecting it. This was an easy five stars for me. And I'm so glad that I gave this one a shot. All right, moving on into August, 2020, The Night Swim by Megan Golden. This was the very first Megan Golden I ever read. And I really, really enjoyed this suspense thriller. I have since read her two other ones and enjoyed them as well. So I definitely hope to see her featured in Book of the Month in the future. We also had the newest release from Riley Sager during that month, Home Before Dark. This is another one of my favorite Riley Sager. So I was super glad to see this as an option. And then the third and final book was one that I read and unhauled. It was called Head Over Heels by Hannah Orenstein. Really just didn't like it at all. It was contemporary. It was very lackluster, very mediocre, and it was an easy unhaul for me. All right, September 2020, starting with Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. This is actually one that I unhauled without reading. I know that's probably going to hurt a lot of people because so many people love Frederick Bachman. I read Beartown and I didn't love it. I did start at least one other of his novels and just couldn't really get into it. So I just kind of figured that Frederick Bachman may not be for me. So I went ahead and unhauled Anxious People. In that box, I also got The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. This was the second book that I read by Simone St. James. I didn't love this one as much as The Sundown Motel, but Simone St. James just does a great job of crafting stories. And I love the way that she utilizes ghosts in a lot of them. So I'm glad to have this one. Also in that box, I got One by One by Ruth Ware. This is a wintry isolation thriller that I also really enjoyed. And again, Ruth Ware, so I had to grab it. Moving on into October of 2020, we have The Girl in the Mirror by Rose Carlisle. So this is one that I didn't read and I unhauled it. It was like a twin kind of swap situation, which didn't intrigue me. Also, it was very short. So I had the feeling that it was gonna just be very fast paced, plot driven, and I wasn't in the mood. So I went ahead and unhauled it. Also in that box was A Good Marriage by Kimberly McCrate, which I did read and it was okay. Didn't do much for me, but I overall enjoyed my reading experience and have since unhauled it. Similarly, The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes by Alyssa R. Sloan. This was kind of a Daisy Jones type-esque story that follows a rock band that fell apart and they've been separated and what's happening to them in the present. And it was just, oh, it was just okay. Like I enjoyed myself while reading it, but not enough to ultimately keep it on my shelves forever. So I have since unhauled it. Sorry if my angle changed. I accidentally hit my ring 
morning light. <laughs> November 2020, the first book that I have is This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins. I did read that. I enjoyed it, but not enough to keep it, so I have since unhauled it. Also in that box was Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane, which I love. Love this immensely. I really had a great time with this one. The third and final book in that box was Good Night Beautiful by Amy Malloy, which I actually read pretty recently. I think it was at some point last year, and I did not like it, so I have unhauled that one. All right, getting to the end of 2020 with December's box, I had This Close to Okay by Lisa Cross Smith. This is one that I did not read. I ended up unhauling it because I kind of lost interest in the story. Also in that box was The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This was just a good fun time. Rachel Hawkins kind of writes what I would deem as fluffy thrillers. They're not going to be super substantial. They're definitely not going to be anything crazy or suspenseful, but this was just a fun time. Also in that box was Martian by Andy Weir, which I literally just finished a couple of days ago, and you will be hearing more of my thoughts in the upcoming May wrap up. All right, January 2021. This box also had three books, two of which I did not read and unhauled. The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai and The Chicken Sisters by KJ Del Antonia. These, if I remember correctly, were ones that just weren't really fitting my vibe, so I went ahead and unhauled them. The third book in that box was The Survivors by Jane Harper. This is another one that I've actually just recently read, and I'll go ahead and keep on my shelves. It wasn't the strongest Jane Harper, but it was okay. Moving on into February 2021, similarly to January, I had two books that I ultimately just decided to unhaul without reading. The first one was Girl A by Abigail Dean, and the second was The Star Cross Sisters of Tuscany by Laurie Spielman Nelson. The only one in that box that I actually read, loved, and enjoyed, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. Of course, I'm always going to pick up her books. I'm probably always going to love her books, and this was no exception. This was one of the best books that I read in 2022, so really, really glad to have this one. All right, March 2021, another one with three books. The first one, The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. I read this. It was okay. I enjoyed it. I had some technical issues with it, but for the most part, had a good reading experience. I kind of have similar feelings to Too Good to Be True by Carola Lovering. This was a really interesting suspense thriller type of genre that I ultimately ended up pretty much enjoying for the most part and would be willing to read more from her in the future. The third and final book in that box in the book club Far Away by Tiff Marcello. This is just one that lost my attention. Again, it wasn't getting the best reviews. It wasn't really fitting my vibe, so I went ahead and unhauled it. Moving on into April of 2021, we have The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb. This is a suspense thriller that I ultimately just lost interest in. Wasn't really super invested in the synopsis. I've since heard some pretty bad things about that story, and I'm kind of glad that I've unhauled it now. Also in that box, Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. This is definitely not my favorite Gillian Flynn, but because I have Gone Girl in this edition, I wanted to go ahead and pick this up as well. And then in that box is one of my favorite Emily Henry's, The People We Meet on Vacation. So I know that this is actually a lot of people's least favorite by her, but I really love this. This was probably the best friends to lovers romance that I've ever read. And I just really loved a lot of the honest conversations that were happening in here. So this was definitely a strong contemporary romance for me. All right, I skipped May's box. So moving on into June, we're actually coming to the first book that I haven't read and actually have kept. When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. Why haven't I read this? I don't know, but I'm still very, very much interested in reading the story, obviously, or I wouldn't have kept it. This is just one that I haven't yet had the opportunity to get through. Luckily, it's not super crazy old. I've only had it for two years at this point, so I will definitely try to make this a priority to get to sometime soon. Also in that box, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Of course, y'all know I was going to snag this up. I also decided in that box to get The Maidens by Alex Michaelides because I did ultimately overall enjoy The Silent Patient. I did not enjoy this one. This was supposedly some type of dark academia and the execution in it was just absolutely awful. So I don't know if I will be reading anything more from Alex Michaelides in the future. I'll probably just go ahead and keep this on my shelves for the matching edition to The Silent Patient, but not great. All right, now we are into July 2021. We are The Brennans by Tracy Lange. This was just a family drama that I ultimately really enjoyed. I read this last year and I thought it was pretty solid, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this one. Also, of course, in July of 2021 was Riley Sager's newest release at the time, Survive the Night. This is probably one that gets the most flack, but I didn't hate it as much as some of his other books. Overall, I felt like it was a pretty atmospheric, chilling type of story. And of course, I'm going to keep it on my shelves. And the final book for that box was The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. This, of course, is one that got all the hype. This, I believe, was a Reese's Book Club selection. It has since been adapted into a show with Jennifer Garner. Definitely got a lot of buzz. I didn't think it was as remarkable as everybody else thought that it was. Like, it was a solid, compulsively readable story. Like, you want to know what happened. But the execution and the ultimate, like, reveal wasn't amazing to me. So I'll go ahead and keep this. But it wasn't my favorite. All right, August of 2021, another three book box, of course, starting with Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina. I read this and I didn't really love it. It was probably the least favorite Sherry Lapina that I've ever read. So I went ahead and just unhauled it. It didn't really do much for me and I didn't see the need to keep it. Also in that box was The People We Keep by Alison Larkin. This was a historical fiction that was set in the 1990s. I hesitate to call that historical fiction, but I actually really enjoyed the overall journey of the main character in this story. And so that's why I decided to keep this on my shelves. The final book in that box was The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This is the third book in that same intertwined companion series. Again, not as strong as The Kiss Quotient. Was stronger than The Bride Test, but not by much. There were some aspects of this that really, 
really got on my nerves, but have kept it for the time being, may ultimately unhaul this and the bride test in the future. All right, September 2021, the first book that we have, Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This was the very first Alice Feeney that I ever read, and ultimately I love the twist in the story. I didn't necessarily love the lead up to it, but really, really enjoyed the twist, which is why I decided to keep this one on my shelves. The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. This was, again, the very first Lisa Jewell that I ever read, and this has now started a love affair with Lisa Jewell. I will now read everything that she's ever written because her books are always a solid reading experience. I just think that she's really great at crafting a novel. So I was thrilled to go ahead and get this one. I've picked up some other of her books in Book of the Month editions, and I will continue to do so if they ever decide to feature her or put her as an add-on, just because I loved this so much. And the final book in that box, The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I adored this one tremendously. It was probably one of the best fake dating stories that I've ever read. I can't say that I loved the other novel as much, which I'll get to in a second, but definitely I'm keeping this one. All right, October 2021, the first book that I have in that box was The X-Hex by Erin Sterling, aka Rachel Hawkins. This was supposed to be like a contemporary witchy type story that I just wasn't really vibing with. I did start it, ultimately decided to stop reading it and have since unhauled it. Also in that box was Everything We Didn't Say by Nicole Bart. This is another one that I remember having a good reading experience with overall, but cannot tell you anything about it. Ultimately, this one was kind of forgettable, so I did unhaul it. Moving on into November 2021, The Collective by Alison Galen. I read this in mid last year and I loved it so much. This was amazing and I highly recommend. Also in that box, We Were Never Here by Andrea Bart. This was a story kind of about a toxic friendship and it somewhat worked for me. I don't usually like books with that trope, but it kind of did it for me, so I decided to go ahead and keep it. Also in that box was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. That was basically a dark contemporary story about a woman and the affair that she had with her teacher and I started reading it. I was really enjoying it for like the first half, but then it just kind of dragged on and on and on. I actually DNF'd that story because I felt like we got everything that you would want from that story within the first half of the book and then it just kind of languished on for no reason. I definitely thought it could have been well better paced and plotted, so it didn't work for me and I DNF'd and unhauled that one. All right, moving into December, I actually have four books for this box because they kind of let you add on one of the book of the month, best books of the year finalists. So I definitely have four and I have all four of them here and I have read all four of them. The first is Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Cosby. Y'all know how much I love this book. It was one of my favorite books of last year and I will now read everything that S.A. Cosby ever writes because this was phenomenal. Then I have A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. This is Shay Earnshaw's very first foray into adult. This was definitely an atmospheric, almost kind of witchy type read, but not in the same way as her other two stories. This actually kind of surrounded a cult and it was really interesting. The execution was somewhat lacking in some places and the reveal at the end, you kind of had to suspend your disbelief, but overall a strong story. A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham was also in that box, really read and enjoyed this suspense thriller. And I'm very much looking forward to reading her newest release, which just came out this year. And the final book for that box, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Again, really enjoyed this one, very fast paced, easy to fly through even with all of the science and stuff going on, but still a solid, solid read. All right, y'all, I gotta speed this up because I've been talking for an hour and a half and we still have a year and a half to get through. So moving on into January, 2021, the only book that I've read and decided to keep, Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This is another fluffy thriller type story. It was not great. It wasn't as good to me as The Wife Upstairs, but since I do have The Wife Upstairs in this edition, I decided to go ahead and keep it. Two other books in that box that I read but didn't keep were The Maid by Nita Prose and The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. Both of those didn't really do too terribly much for me, so I went ahead and decided to unhaul them both. February of 2022 was actually only a one book box for me, and I decided to select The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Buchanan. Unfortunately, this is definitely their weakest book by far, but of course I'll go ahead and keep it on my shelves because it matches all the other pretty editions that I have, but I was not the biggest fan of this one. All right, moving into March of 2022, Tell Me Everything by Erica Krause. This is part true crime, part memoir, and I ultimately really enjoyed the story and the way that Erica Krause narrated and wrote her story. I thought it was really well done. The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley was also in that box. I did not enjoy this one as much as the guest list. In fact, for the majority of the story, I was very, very bored until we kind of got to the end and the twist, which I thought overall was pretty well done. So I'll go ahead and keep this for now. And then of course, also in that box, which I will surely be keeping, The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I don't have the best memories of this story just because I remember being very, very distracted. My enjoyment of this was a me thing, not the book thing. This is probably one that could do with a reread just because I wasn't fully invested in the story. But again, ghosts, thrills, chills, all the good stuff still would recommend. All right, so I skipped April and May. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into June of 2022, starting with Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier. I decided to go ahead and jump on this one because I was starting to get on the Jennifer Hillier bandwagon. I don't remember if I had read anything by her at the time I picked this up, but all I know is that I had heard nothing but great things about her and she sounded like she wrote really dark and twisted stories, which y'all know I can't resist. I have already read this and really enjoyed this one as well. Breathless by Amy McCullough was also in that box. This is definitely a survival story that is set on a mountain climbing edition and I really enjoyed this overall and all the things that you kind of learn about mountain climbing. I really, really did. All right, back up to three books for July, starting with Firstborn by Will Dean. This was 
the very first book that I ever read by Will Dean and I really really liked it. There were two pretty big twists in here that I didn't see coming so overall I thought this was very well crafted. The It Girl by Ruth Ware was also featured in that box. This was her newest release at the time. I actually just finished this in February of this year. It was kind of her stab at dark academia and ultimately I really really enjoyed this one. Then of course as per usual in July we had Riley Sager's newest release at the time, The House Across the Lake. This I feel is one of his weakest stories. It didn't really work out for me but of course I'll keep it on my shelves. All right moving into August of 2022, Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter. This is the second book in her Andrea Oliver series. I don't know whether this is going to be the second and final book and it'll be a zoology or if it's going to be more. I do know that I really enjoyed this way more than pieces of her which I definitely didn't like and I didn't like Andrea Oliver in that story. Really enjoyed her in this one though so this made up for that. When We Were Bright and Beautiful by Jillian Medoff. This is another one that I have not read but still have and do plan on reading so we're gonna get to it eventually. Also in that box was Small Angels by Lauren Owen. So this is actually one that I decided to unhaul without reading. That was the first one in quite a few boxes that I had made that decision with. I started to read it and it wasn't really quite what I was expecting from this. It wasn't what I was looking for so I decided to unhaul it. All right for September of 2022 Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. I picked this up because I absolutely loved Razorblade Tears and want to read everything this man will write or has written. This is one of his backlist. I have not yet read it but I certainly will be soon. Also in that box was Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn which I read, didn't enjoy, and have since unhauled. Moving on into October of 2022 Bells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. This is Adrian Young's first foray into adult speculative fiction. This was an adult atmospheric witchy read which I just finished earlier this year and really enjoyed. I also picked up Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin because I was hearing nothing but amazing things about this and Gabrielle Zevin kind of had been on and off my radar for a while. This was very strong for me for the first half and it really went way way down for the second half. So like the first half was probably five stars, the second half was probably three stars. I split the difference and I gave it a four stars but the longer that I'm away from it it's probably more of a 3.5 just how much I hated the main character Sadie in the story. I understand that a lot of people really really loved it but unfortunately Gabrielle Zevin took some turns in the story that I didn't like and I think could have been done a lot better. So it is what it is. I didn't love it as everybody else but I still have it. Still thought it was beautifully written and I will probably keep this on my shelves. The final book in that box The Family Game by Catherine Stedman. I have not yet read this but I am excited to. I think it's definitely on my TBR for 2023 because I need it to satisfy a reading challenge. I think possibly one of the buzzwords for 2023. So I will be getting to it at some point before the end of 2023. I have never read anything by Catherine Stedman so we're gonna have to see how it goes. All right moving on into November of 2022 starting with Signal Fires by Danny Shapiro. I decided to pick this up because she runs a podcast. I think it's called like Family Secrets and it's about people whose lives have been changed or devastated by secrets that have been kept hidden from them by their family. Danny Shapiro herself had some family secrets revealed and it kind of changed her life. This is a fiction novel from her. She has a memoir out. This is a fiction. It's very very short but it sounds like it's going to be very poignant and hard-hitting and I'm looking forward to seeing what she does with this. Another one from that box that I haven't read, The Last Party by Claire McIntosh. I have enjoyed some of the other Claire McIntoshes that I've read and so when I saw this come out I wanted to jump on it. I've heard some pretty good things. I think that this is primarily detective fiction which I've been moving away from but we're gonna see what Claire can do with that one. Also in that box was The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. I ultimately decided to unhaul that one without reading fairly fairly recently. I had it on my Slayerfest TBR to read at some point and the reviews were just getting to me. It seemed like hardly anybody liked that book. It was one of the lowest rated books on my TBR and it didn't seem like the execution of it was great so I've ultimately decided to go ahead and just unhaul it. All right ending in December I have three books that I have not yet read so I'm just going to run through them quickly. All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham, A Quiet Life by Ethan Joella, and Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I have not read this one so we're gonna see if I actually like this more than Sharp Objects. If I don't I probably won't be continuing with Gillian Flynn in the future should she decide to release any more books. All right y'all we are finally in the home stretch. We are now officially into 2023 and in January I only got two books. The first What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. I really really enjoyed this one a lot. I think this was Kate Alice Marshall's very first jaunt into adult suspense and I think she did a phenomenal job with this one. Also in that box was The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton and I did not like that book at all so I have unhauled it. I ended up skipping February's box so moving on into March of 2023. I have The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. I literally just finished this a few days ago. It was part of my May reads and so I will be wrapping that up soon. It was overall a pretty decent reading experience. Nothing mind-blowing or anything but kept me engaged from start to finish. I also have I Have Some Questions for You by Rebecca Mackay. This will actually be the next book that I read because it just came in from my library. So I will be reading this very very soon. This is a suspense thriller and I believe there's like a podcast element in here so you know I'm down for that. Okay so that was technically it in terms of my main subscription service that I've been with for five years but at some point last year I think it was 
around August, I decided to open up a second subscription. And the reason is, is because I was noticing that Book of the Month was releasing so many great releases and add-ons and I wasn't able to fit them all in one box. And I didn't want to wait and potentially have them build up because I never knew whether there was going to be a month where I was going to be able to add those because if they kept releasing these great books that I wanted, my box was always going to be full. So I have since paused that subscription. I probably will not reactivate it. I'm not going to be using it anymore, especially now since Book of the Month is allowing us to do four add-ons instead of just two. We can technically get five books in our box. So I don't really see a need to continue with that subscription. But I do have a handful of books that I've gotten over the past like eight months since I opened that second subscription. And I'll go ahead and just run through those really quickly with you here today since we're already talking about them. First, I have Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I've been slowly kind of collecting Lisa Jewell's backlist in Book of the Month editions if they have them just because I have most of her books in these editions so far. And I have not yet read this one, but I hope to soon. I did end up picking up Wayward by Amelia Hart during the March selections. I've heard a lot of really great things about this. This definitely sounds like it's going to be witchy and somewhat whimsical and I'm excited to give it a try when I have the opportunity to. Georgie All Along by Kate Claiborne was one of the February selections that I went ahead and picked up. I have recently read this and I will be wrapping it up for May. Another one that I will be wrapping up during May, The Writing Retreat by Julia Barks. This is a suspense thriller, like I said, that I just recently read and will be talking to you about shortly. Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. This was an August 22 release that I picked up from that second subscription with Book of the Month and I hated this book. This was one of the worst books that I read in 2022. Why do I still have it? Because it's a talking point. Like I see it and I'm physically angry about how much I hated this book. So we're going to go ahead and keep it on my shelves for now. I also picked up The Wilder Women by Ruth Emmy Lange. I have not yet read this story, but I'm excited to. I haven't really heard the best things about this. I think this is one of the lowest rated books on my TBR, but I still think I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I really didn't love this story. I thought it was nothing compared to the love hypothesis. There were a lot of technical issues that I had. I will be giving Allie Hazelwood's new release, Love Theoretically, a try, but I was pretty disappointed in this one. Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. And another book of the month edition that I wanted to have from her backlist. Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. I know that this book has been getting a lot of buzz, a lot of hype. I really think that for the most part, it's worth it. I didn't necessarily love the plot of this because there really isn't one, but I loved a lot of the lessons and the messages in this book. I think this book was highly quotable. And so that was my favorite thing about this one. And now we're getting into the very final ones. The only book that I ended up selecting in April, The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. I am excited to give this a shot, even though I'm very hit or miss with Megan Miranda, but for the most part, I still have a good time while reading her stories. And then this last May, I got the Collective Regrets of Clover by Mickey Brammer. I'm excited to go ahead and read this story about a death doula because I think it's going to talk about grief a lot and you know I enjoy stories about grief. And then the last two books, Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Y'all know that I had to jump on this because I loved Part of Your World so so much. I'm very excited to jump into this one when I have an opportunity to do so. I've heard some great things about it so far and I'm excited. And then one of my most anticipated releases for the year, The Last Word by Taylor Adams, which I should be getting to in June. All right y'all, that is it. Those are all the books that I've ordered from Book of the month since I started my subscription. This is probably one of the longest videos I've ever filmed and I don't even know how much I'm going to be able to cut out. So we'll see. I really, really apologize. But I still hope that you enjoyed seeing my book of the month collection, what I've read, what I've not read, what I've unhauled, what I've DNF, all of that good stuff. But for now, I am starving and I need to go get some lunch. So if you have made it to the very end of this extremely long video, please go ahead and leave me a book stack emoji because that is definitely what I have surrounding me right now. Well, more like a pile of books, but you get the drift. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post one video a week now, sometimes two, depending on what I'm able to do. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.